Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Grixis Vampires. What is going on, everybody, and welcome back to another standard gameplay video. I hope you guys are doing well. Hopefully, your week is starting off strong. We're trying something out today uh, based on a couple of different things. First of all, the list is brought to you by Hello Good Game. I did not create this list, uh, but it came about because... Somebody commented on one of our videos last week and said, hey, I would love to see a deck built around Evelyn. Uh, now, Evelyn is a very powerful card. Uh, five mana, two five with flash. Whenever it or another vampire enters the battlefield under your control, you exile the top card of each player's deck with a collection counter on it. Once each turn, you can play a card from exile with a collection counter on it. Uh, if it was exiled by an ability you controlled, you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast it. So the idea is very clearly to steal stuff. Um, but again, Hello Good Game put this list together, uh, and so thank you so much to him. Um, this is an interesting one though because it does does it it plays into the vampires a little bit uh and by that i mean we do have soren that's going to throw some vampires out and we have corpse appraiser as well as blood tithe harvester all of which are obviously vampire includes and make for some really good plays especially with evelyn however at heart this is very controlling <clears throat> excuse me Ooh. i just had a quick bite to eat and it went down the wrong side Anyway, uh, it is very controlling in its nature. We've got the expressive iteration for some card draw. We've got voltage surge and syncopate of all counter spells. Kind of an interesting one um, for some some removal and some counter magic. We've got shatter skull smashing, uh, maestro's charm, a really lucrative card, does quite a bit for us, uh, and then hostile takeover as the kind of sweeper of choice here, which is actually very interesting as well. We do, of course, have Shadow's Verdict uh, to, to kind of balance that out. And then Seagate Restoration. You'll notice some oddities, though. <clears throat> uh, Galazeth Prismari is in here. And the reason Galazeth Prismari is in here is because we also have Widespread Thieving, uh, which is an interesting one. Three mana enchantment, Hideaway 5. This is one of those new Hideaway enchantments that you really don't see very often. Uh, but whenever you cast a multicolored spell, you create a treasure token, which of course works exceptionally well with the, the Galazeth because you don't have to sacrifice them. Uh, and then you pay Wooberg, and if you do, you can play the Exiled card. Uh, surprisingly easy in this deck. I'll just be honest. It's not that hard to do, especially with Galazeth coming down. Uh, we've got tons of multicolored stuff to trigger it, uh, and all in all, I think it's going to be a really interesting time. We do, of course, I, I forgot to mention, we do have Meat Hook Massacre as well uh, for some sweeper options, but that's the deck. Uh, again, hello, good game. Thank you so much for sharing this one. I'm curious because I have played one or two games with this just as practice rounds. Uh, I did okay with it. I think I won one and lost one, so we're kind of even. I'm very curious to see where this actually goes. Uh, I think it looks really fun. It's going to be a blast to play. So without further ado, guys, let's jump right in. All right, guys, and here we are for game number one. This is definitely... Oh. We're amazing! <laughs> uh, okay, uh, g game two, yeah. <laughs> What's up guys, before we jump into the next game, I just wanna remind you, if you would like to pick up this month's Patreon rewards, feel free to do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. All right, you know, it's nice to be so good that when people see your username, they just give up on the spot, you know? It's, uh, it's really cool. <laughs> we'll keep this hand. Um. Yeah, I, uh, I like this quite a bit. We've got the double black for the Shadows Verdict. We've got uh, Blood Tithe Harvester that we can actually throw down on turn two with the Shatter Skull Smashing Land. Um, and we just have Expressive Iteration now, so yeah, I think this is pretty solid. Um, let's see, what's the best option for us here? I don't really want to take the excess damage if we don't have to. I'm just gonna do this. My accept my expectations is gonna be a very grindy game, and so I'm not super worried about the damage we're getting right off the bat here. Um, sure. Alright, um, do we go for the land and then just drop yeah, I mean I think we probably do. Um I think what we're gonna do is throw this down tapped, uh, and then just play a blood tithe harvester. Pretty straightforward play, honestly. Uh, we may block, we'll figure something out. They're stuck on lands, which is really important for us here. Uh, the question is, do we block here? I'm gonna say no. 
Um, I would have expected a deadly dispute, but <laughs> I guess they just don't have it, uh, which is kind of phenomenal. Uh, with that in mind, we don't actually want to deal with anything that they're doing. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I think we just play Prismari. Uh, what this allows us to do is uh, Voltage Surge if we need to. But more importantly, next turn we can just Shadows Verdict and exile everything. And then they're basically left with nothing. Wow! Not a card I have seen in a long time. That's phenomenal. Um... I don't love that, do we? Eh, I think we just let it happen though. Again, it's kind of fine. Wow, they're gonna leave one back. I figured they would. Um, I will actually block here, enticing them to, uh, to give it that minus one, minus one, because it doesn't matter to me. If they go for the treasure token, it kind of sucks, but looks like that's not gonna be the case. Perfect. Give me a land. That's nah, not a land. But let's go ahead and exile everything. Um, and now they've got nothing. Uh, they also don't get any of the triggers, uh, which is really relevant right now, given they are so stuck on land. So that was kind of our big Hail Mary play at this point. Uh, we do have widespread thieving as well. So that actually is going to come in handy to, to give us some treasure tokens potentially. Uh, yeah. I mean, alternatively, I guess we can just go for the, the Blood Tithe Harvester here. Um, yeah, let's do that. I'd rather kind of keep things moving forward here, uh, and we do need to pressure them at some point. We get to leave up the Voltage Surge uh, and potentially deal with like a Hive or something like that if they do get a land. This is going to be a problem card eventually. Uh, they're going to Meat Hook? Okay. It's kind of fine. I don't really care that much. Uh, yeah, I mean, they're killing stuff, but it's like not anything super important. The Galazeth was certainly relevant, but like, other than that, let's go ahead and hide away something cool. Uh, I guess it's just the appraiser. It's not that great, but it's something. Uh, interesting. I guess we put that into our hand. We'll put that into our deck and we'll throw this over here and just throw it out for a land I suppose um, cool <clears throat> I mean this isn't a very exciting game is it not a whole lot's happening um, I'm going to do this before they can draw let's go ahead and sack this I just don't want them to have anything on the board, basically. I know we have Shadow's Verdict, which exiles it, but I think this is fine. Um, all right, well, this should be kind of cool because we actually get multiple treasure tokens now. Uh, what do we want? Ooh, I mean, it's got to be Evelyn, right? Yeah, it's definitely Evelyn. Uh, Galazeth Prismari is also fairly tempting, but I mean, this is just too good to pass up. Uh, let's exile that. We'll get another card. Oh. <laughs> Uh, I actually think it's expressive iteration. We've already got the Evelyn that we're actually going to be able to play, like, now if we want. Um, we'll just pass here. I don't want to burn the treasure tokens because I do want to play the cards under the, the widespread thieving here. So, we'll see. I don't know. This is a weird game. This is a super weird game. Yeah, wealth is pretty good. Yeah, pretty solid. Um... All right, so uh, how do we want to do this? We can hit for one, which just gets rid of the two tokens, and then we can kind of start to deal with Loth. So let's do that first. Um, we actually gain some life as well. I mean, it offsets it with their own meat hook, which is fine. But the idea being that we're not going to just die to a random meat hook now. Uh, sick. Let's go for the attack. Um, and now we can expressive iteration, which is going to trigger both of these. I will not pay for that one. Uh, we'll put you in the hand. I think we actually do want all of these, so we can throw that in the deck and then put this one down. Okay. 
Oh, wait. Huh. I misunderstood what was going to happen there. I thought we only declined this one, not both. Okay. Hey, my bad. Uh, that's cool. No worries at all. Um, all of what we are doing is just setting up for more awesome stuff, so that's fine. We do need a multicolored spell here to actually do anything, though. That's worth noting. Yep. Uh, yeah. We... Uh, yeah, that's fine. Um, I think we are just going to start dealing with some things here. Uh, kind of unfortunate. We definitely messed up a little bit there, but that's fine. Let's, uh, let's go here. Um, yep. We'll attack you. This is going to attack Lull. Excellent. Pretty straightforward. Um, and we'll just pass. This game has gone on way too long. It should not have been... Uh, like we we should have been able to actually deal with some stuff here, but it's fine. Uh, we should be able to manage it Okay, unless they just have like a crazy good turn. The thing is like they could have blood on the snow But they have only two snow lands, which is not very good Especially given we exiled like all of their cheap stuff. So blood on the snow is not as big of a threat as it normally would be Excuse me. And we just have all the mana in the world, so like it might be worth it here just to Xander's Lounge, like cycle it away. Sure, we burn a treasure token, but I think digging further into the deck and getting to a win here is pretty crucial. So we'll definitely end up going that route. Opponent might be a little pissed. I'm not really sure what's going on. Um, they do have Field of Ruin and Hive of the Eye Tyrant, both of which are great options, but I think they might just be a little mad. Uh, we were able to deal with both of their planeswalkers with a land, <laughs> which is, I mean, at speaking, assuming, uh, from the other side a little bit, I assume that doesn't feel too good. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is an interesting deck. I, I really like the way this plays out a lot of the time, but it does feel like very stally. Uh, even in practice, again, I mentioned I played a couple games, uh, just to kind of get the hang of the deck. And uh, it felt very stally, which is fine. I think that's just the nature of the deck. It just, uh, the games go long, that's all. We may only get two in, um, which is cool. I will say uh, later this week on Thursday, we are gonna have another Explorer event video. I've already recorded it. My goodness, was it fun. You guys are hopefully gonna really enjoy that one. Uh, I do appreciate everybody being supportive of the last one because we did not, we don't normally, of course, do Explorer events and so, that was certainly a uh, uh, something a little bit different for us, uh, which I really enjoyed. It was a blast. Uh, it's a new format for, for me, and uh, it's a great learning experience to try and, you know, do something a little different. So hopefully uh, we can keep doing more stuff like that. It was a blast. Uh, yeah, I'm just cycling this because why not? Um, opponent is... <laughs> I think a little upset, potentially. Uh, worth noting, we could have also just not cycled it and instead used the blood token, but I think we've got the mana to, to make that happen, so I'm not super worried about it here. Um, we probably want to start attacking with Hive uh, just to start um, finishing some stuff off here. Let's see. Yeah, let's just go ahead and do this. I'm leaving this up as well, just in case. Okay. Um, sure. You got it. Probably should have activated the other one, but uh, that's fine. Just grab you. Um... Opponent playing just tremendously slow here. Uh, yeah, okay, that's fine. Um, doesn't really matter which way we go, and then let's activate this. Yeah, I think this is fine. We can basically just attack in with everything, and it doesn't really matter. Um, 
We also just have Hall of the Storm Giants that can come down next turn. Or excuse me, come down this turn, but then attack in next turn. Uh, which is obviously just a much stronger threat. I assume they just block something. That's fine. Um, basically, we're just trying to get stuff off the board here. They're going to deadly dispute. Okay. Sure. I mean, we're so they're solving their mana issue, which is, like, reasonable. Um, they still don't get much off of, like, a Blood on the Snow. Uh, and I think for that reason, we're going to end up uh, finding a way to kind of try and deal with some stuff here. But this... Uh, it's just a weird grindy game. We may only get one game. <laughs> this is going to be a long one. Confront the past. Okay. So they are going to be able to bring something back here. Um, I'm just going to play Hell of the Storm Giants. And yeah, I think that's kind of it. Um, I'm kind of curious to see which Planeswalker they bring back, actually. Um... It could be either one, I guess. So, sure. <laughs> it's a fascinating game. Okay, they're going for Professor Onyx. Sick. Uh, kind of a bold move. Um, just because we can kind of deal with her, like, this turn. Um, we've got the, the Den of the Bugbear that can come in, deal 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, yeah, we literally can deal with her. So that was basically just drawing a card. <laughs> uh, Maestro's Charm is quite good. We can actually just Hall of the Storm Giants, can't we? Uh, I'm actually going to go this route, though. So the reason I'm doing this um, is it safely leaves up a little bit more mana for us, which I think is important. It also just spreads the board out. So what's kind of underrated about Den of the Bugbear is you do keep the, the tokens after the fact, uh, which is really good. Um, Maestro's Charm is going to be able to deal with something here as well, so like I'm feeling pretty safe. They may have another Confront the Past I guess they could get. This is a very interesting grind for sure. Yep, another Confront the Past. Sure, you did it. Way to be there. Okay. All good. That's fine. Uh, yep. Um, we can just bounce one of these guys, uh, which I'm not opposed to. Uh, I think we'll just do this. Let's look at the top five cards. Uh, I'm gonna auto pay. <laughs> Let's actually do this now. Um, Sure, I'll play, I'll do this. See, it didn't... I'm so confused by that. Um, let's get the eye twitch out of there. Let's get syncopate. <laughs> Seems like an easy way to deal with confront the past. Um, and then... Probably just blood tithe harvester because it's a multicolored card and we get treasure tokens off of it. Um, yeah. Start refilling the hand. Um, this is a very weird game. Again, for the exact same reasons that we've already talked about, I'm going this route. And we're just going to attack all. Um, we still get to leave up Syncopate now, so at this point, it's more just a matter of, like, they're not going to be able to deal with everything. Um, so we're just outvaluing. Slowly, for sure, but we're outvaluing. They can kill the den. I don't care. Doesn't really matter that much. Uh, we could bounce it, but I'm not going to. Yep. Yep, yep. Uh, do we have enough mana to... to I'm gonna... I'm gonna pass leaving up the syncopate. We could technically blood tithe... Blood tithe harvester here as well, I think, but... <laughs> Nope. <laughs> Syncopate for one. Heck yes. Uh, well, let's see. Seven. Yeah, okay. I was going to say we had exactly enough to kill him. Fantastic. That was a grindy game, guys. I know, but we did it. Let's go to a game two. It might be a longer video, but I think we can do it. All right, guys. Here we are for our second game. <laughs> uh, and yeah, this is a keep for sure. 
Uh, we have turn two syncopate or blood tithe harvester. Kind of depends what we're up against, uh, what we'll go for here. But yeah, it was pretty easy. Um, I'm trying to think. I think, I think we actually go for the red side on the pathway. It may not matter, but um, yeah, I'm actually just gonna pass. So we'll probably syncopate whatever they do here, or if we can, just voltage surge it. We may do that. Um, okay. Let's let's just put Hall out. Uh, and I am going to pass here. I kind of want to leave the Blood Tithe Harvester for after the Widespread Harvester. Ooh, let's not auto-pass really quick. Just in case. They're just going to play with fire. Okay, well that I am going to let happen. I don't really care about that. Uh, two damage is annoying, but like seems like a bit more of a desperation move like they just didn't have another play uh which is cool with me and they scribed to the bottom so that's good um i will easily syncopate that um just means that if they don't have a land they're done for the turn <laughs> um which is pretty good okay they did that's fine uh, we don't actually have to play around anything, really. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and play Widespread Thieving. Let's get... I mean, probably Seagate. That seems good. Uh, yeah, and then... Next turn, can we just pop off? One, two... Yeah, maybe. This seems really good. There's the Magma Opus. Is this Hinata? Could be a Hinata deck. Uh, let's do this. No, so we can't do it yet. Uh, with that in mind, do we just leave up Evelyn? I think we do. Um, Evelyn seems pretty reasonable here. Um, we could do it at the end of their turn and then set up for the Seagate Restoration on our following turn. Because we will get a treasure token from that. Uh, and worth noting, it's just whenever you cast it, so, like, we don't even have to do anything crazy. We just get the treasure token, even if this gets countered. Wait, stop auto-passing. Dang it. That was really annoying. Uh, we should have been able to block some damage there, but it's cool. So here we get a treasure token. They could very easily counter this with a, I don't know, Dwari Disruption, something silly like that. Not in the gate, I guess, but this is gonna hopefully land. And if it does, we'll be in pretty reasonable shape. Um, <laughs> wow, uh, yeah, reasonable for sure. Sick, uh, <laughs> okay. So, um, Let's do this. Uh, this is gonna create our treasure token. I am gonna go for it, I think, and auto pay. This is gonna refill our hand, so we're basically just setting up for the future turns here. Get a very cheap Seagate restoration. Um, hopefully they don't have negate, because otherwise, I mean, that would kinda suck. Oh, they had it. How annoying. Um, Okay, well, we still get a Blood Tithe Harvester, and we still get a trigger, which is great. Um, I guess we don't attack because we can block these. We are, I mean, we are under the the pressure of some little 1-1s one here, which is a little annoying, but we do have Meat Hook Massacre now. We've got a lot of options. Um, curious. Uh, I will block. I'm expecting they've got a Sweeper, so I'm just going to block. They can kill the Blood Tithe Harvester with just the, the tokens if they want. I don't particularly care. Nope, they're dealing it to the face. At least one of them. Both of them. All right, cool. So I'm kind of glad I did what I did because I'm assuming they're going to sweep this turn or do some crazy shenanigans. Yep, burn down the house. There it is. Again, glad I blocked. Uh, yep. So... I mean, I think it's just Soren. We obviously, worth noting here, guys, we obviously aren't playing perfectly. <laughs> uh, and that's 
I mean, pretty clear. I'm not the best with this deck. This is a very interesting one that takes, in my opinion at least, quite a bit of finesse, uh, which takes someone who is much more skilled than I am to just understand right off the bat. Uh, unfortunately, I, I don't think um, we're playing super well. They are down to one card in hand, uh, which is great for us. Hostile Takeover is probably not going to be super relevant. Okay, yeah. Don't love that. Um, but at the very least, they don't have another play this turn, so... Helpful. <laughs> play the black. Uh, let's do this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the Hostile Takeover. Ugh, that's not good. We attack for two. <laughs> All right, sick. Uh, yeah, chances are we're going to die here. The The Arcane Bombardment is just going to be able to take over for the most part. So, All right, play with fire. Yep, here it comes. What did they exile? Negate. Okay, well, that could have been substantially worse. So I will take that. <laughs> Three, four, five, six. So we do have Hall of the Storm Giants. Um, hmm. This is really interesting uh, because in a weird way, there's a world where we don't die and instead we win. Um, not super likely, but I mean, it's a potential option. Hmm. All right. Them hitting the gate was like potentially the worst thing they could have, in fact, definitely the worst thing they could have hit. Okay, there's the spike field hazard. A little surprised they didn't kill the vampire because they do have the play with fire. Okay, they're going to play with fire now. Deal two. Scribe to the bottom. Good sign. And we attack in. Okay. <laughs> Technically, we have lethal next turn. Um... Hopefully they just, like, brick and draw a land. A land's actually kind of bad because they do have the Hall of the Storm Giants. Okay. That's fine, actually. Uh, <laughs> Let's try something here. Um... Let's take... Uh, you? I guess. We'll throw you back and we'll th take you. Let's get that down. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we can just like... I think we just force the issue. Um, it's not like amazing, but it's the best we can do. They're j obviously just gonna block with one of their guys. That's fine. Uh, we're slowly gaining a lot of life back, though, which is helpful. Don't draw anything good. <laughs> Please don't draw anything good. Um, crap. Okay, well, they're gonna kill the vampire. What did they hit? Big score? Which they can't play, I don't believe, because they can't discard a card. So that's helpful. Uh, and they're spending all their burn just to do that, so that's good. If we draw a land... Ah, oh, we didn't draw a land. Okay. This can't hit players, which is really annoying. Um, find a way to close the game, Kev. <laughs> you can do this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh. I'm dumb. Cool. We did it. Right? Did I math right? Oh, thank goodness. Oh, what a game. All right, let's talk about this deck. All right, guys, so as you can tell, this deck, I think, takes a lot more skill than I am able to put in. Technically, I know we only played two games, but that was an undefeated run, uh, which is pretty awesome. Um, but this is a tricky, tricky deck. It's a very good deck, in my opinion. Uh, hello, good game. Thank you so much, my friend. I really do appreciate you putting this together and sharing over on Aetherhub. But uh, man, so many little details to consider. Uh, and thankfully, we were able to do it. Um, expect long games <laughs> that's 
that's the best I can I can say uh, because it does it does lend itself much more to a long game, uh, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you're looking for easy wins, I wouldn't say this is the deck for you. But it was a blast. I really enjoyed it. Hello, good game did a wonderful job throwing this one together. So thank you so much. Uh, and yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you have a phenomenal Tuesday. We'll see you again very soon for some more standard gameplay videos.